less than two weeks away from the release of Rambo Last Blood. That means today we're talking Rambo 3. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your take on Rambo 3. Do you love this one? Do you think it's just as good as the others? Do you think it's the worst? Do you think it's underrated? All of that fun stuff. Let's have a nice, lively discussion. Also, if you don't know, I'm doing this review series with my friend Cody Leach. He's dropping his reviews of the Rambo movies at the exact same time as me. You can check out his reviews right up there. And we are reviewing each of the movies in the Rambo series leading up to Last Blood. You can check out my other reviews in this playlist right here. With that said, let's get started talking about the production of Rambo 3. After the massive success of Rambo First Blood Part 2, a Rambo 3 became a top priority. Originally, they hired Russell Mulkey, the director of uh, Highlander, to direct the film and even started working on it. He was sent to Israel to start doing some pre-production. Then two weeks into production, Stallone ended up kind of letting him go over some creative differences. There's like this weird story about Stallone asking him to hire some like intimidating looking Russian thugs for the film and the person that Russell hired did not meet Stallone's criteria for that. So he was let go. Then Peter McDonald, the person that had been the second unit director on Rambo First Blood Part II was hired to take his place, even though he'd never directed a movie before. He was very experienced as a second unit director. And if you don't know what that means, that's the person that kind of shoots the stuff that the main cast isn't on and they have to try and match the style of the main director, but they're basic job is to be able to get all the extra footage that needs to be shot. At the time of its release, it was the highest budgeted film of all time, actually with just $60 million. Oh, how budgets have changed over the last 30 years. And then after it came out, the Guinness Book of World Record declared it the most violent movie of all time with over 100 on-screen kills and over 200 acts of violence inside of the film. The movie went on to make over triple its budget at the global box office, but because because the previous film had been such a wild success, it still kind of felt like a disappointment because it made only about half as much as Rambo First Blood Part Two. So while it wasn't necessarily a bomb, you can certainly see why a lot of people thought it would underperform at the box office. A lot of this is probably due to the fact that this is one of the worst timed movies of all time. The central plot line involves the Soviet Afghan war that had been going on for like 10 years at the time they went into production. Well, the Soviets started to pull out of Afghanistan 10 days before the movie's release. So upon release, it was already an out of date film. Add to that kind of its legacy inside of time because of the events of September 11th kind of make this movie seem very ill-conceived. Over the last 30 years, both Stallone and McDonald have kind of issued some statements saying they weren't entirely happy with how the film turned out. McDonald said this, I tried very hard to change the Rambo character a bit and make him a vulnerable and humorous person. I failed totally. Likewise, Stallone has said he never felt like he found the right emotional core for the film. But it just didn't work out that way. And, it, and it's, it's my fault because there was not enough emotional Hook up. With that said, let's get started talking about the good. And the first thing you have to talk about with this film is that of all the films in the Rambo franchise, this is easily the one with the biggest and the slickest production. Just even the picture quality from Rambo First Blood Part 2 to this film, there's a massive jump in quality. I mean, it looks like 10 years passed between these two films, even though it was only about three years. Then you look at the scope and the size of the battle sequences inside of this film, and they are just massive. There's multiple sequences involving big, gigantic crowds of people on horses with helicopters swooping over them, and there's these massive shots like of all of this taking place. It's not just close-ups of horse people and then a helicopter. I mean, you see the helicopter in frame with this massive explosion of a building with people chasing across the room. These are huge sequences that are incredibly difficult to stage, and there's multiple of them inside of this film. In the year 2019, when we're used to movies like Endgame and Michael Bay's Transformers movies where entire cities are blown to pieces and big CGI battles and destruction and things like that, it's easy to forget that when a movie like Rambo 3 came out, this was as big as action could get. This was peak 
big blockbuster action in the year 1988. Speaking of the action, the movie has a nice variety of action sequences inside of it. It starts off with Rambo in a stick fight. You get another kind of stealth sequence that's not exactly like the one in the previous film or the previous two films where he's in a cave taking guys out. There's a lot of bow and arrow action. Uh, Rambo gets in a number of different fights of different sorts with people and of course a bunch of big massive massive battles inside of it. Troutman even gets it's kind of shot inside of it. The sequence where he fails at the beginning where he gets captured. Then as he gets freed, he gets to fire machine guns and take out bad guys too. Now the first 45 minutes of this can be a little bit on the slow side as we're waiting for Rambo to get to the village. But as soon as you hit about the 40, 45 minute mark of the film, it's basically action straight from that point onward because he gets in, plays that Afghan sport where he's on the horseback. Then there's a big battle. He sneaks into the base. He has to escape the base. He has to sneak back into the base. He escapes the Troutman. Big massive battle. I mean, this is a movie that once it gets going, it does not let up until the credits roll. As it is a Rambo movie, of course, you got to talk about Rambo himself. And in regards to the Rambo franchise, there's grounded Rambo and then there's fantasy legend Rambo. This movie is probably peak fantasy legend Rambo as Stallone himself was about as jacked as he ever was in his entire career. Like he put on 15 extra pounds of muscle from where he was at in Rambo First Blood 2 to get to the shape that he was in in this film while still not having any body fat. His hair is bigger than ever. His knife is bigger than ever. And once again, he's a one-man army trying to stop a 10-year war all by himself. So inside of the film, you actually get to see him injured in this one pretty significantly. We'd seen him like sew himself up before. Here he goes full bonkers with this one. He gets impaled, snaps it off inside of him, then pokes the stick out like, you know, three hours later, whatever, when he's in a cave, pours gunpowder into it, lights it, <laughs> cauterizes the wound, and he's good to go to fight another tank. Now, we'll talk about the absurdity in the, of that in the bad section of this one, but there's a side to it that the movie just like, let's just take Rambo, legendary sliders up to 11. He is a superhero that can win wars by himself and heal mortal wounds with some gunpowder. For me, if you're gonna make Rambo the superhuman character, you might as well just go for it, and this movie does just go for it, and you should have some fun with the fact that this is kind of ridiculous. And to that point, Next thing I want to talk about is the movie adds a little bit of humor into the mix. This is another one that could potentially go in the bad, it could go in the mixed, or it could go in the good, depending on your perspective on it. I think for this movie overall, that they kind of had a bit more self-awareness. Let's We're making a big popcorn film. We're not making an actual <laughs> important message about something. This is a big, explosive, blockbuster film. Let's add a little bit of lightness into it. So there's some little one-liners sprinkled throughout the film. Rambo definitely cracks a couple jokes. And it can feel a little bit out of place at certain points in time because of the nature of the way we've seen him before. But I think if you stop and think about where he gets the most jokies when he's with Troutman, and you stop and think about that, we've never really seen the two of them just hanging out before. We've never seen the two of them on a journey where they would have rapport, they would have camaraderie amongst them. So it's not as ridiculous as it might seem on face value. There's a, I will talk about some of this in the bad and the, the way that the dialogue gets a little bit more action movie cliche in this film, but I don't inherently mind the fact that they tried to break a little bit of the tension. One of my big issues with Rambo First Blood Part Two is that it just takes itself so seriously while being this ludicrous film where Rambo's just blowing up cities <laughs> or blowing up villages left and right, um, you know, to win the Vietnam War, and it does it with a totally straight face and has people monologuing about politics. If my options are political monologues in a dumb movie or cheesy one-liners, probably gonna go with cheesy one-liners. One final thing on the good on this one, while this is a movie that inherent to the premise of the film, it was out of date the moment it came out, history hasn't been kind to it because of the way that certain things moved in the, with Afghanistan, September 11th, all that, puts the movie in a very odd place in history. If you put all that aside, that's a lot to put aside, I think that this movie has aged much better than Rambo First Blood 2 because it can stand a little bit better as just a big blockbuster film with better production values, bigger explosions, and it's not so reliant on a specific time period for the audience to connect with it. And certainly, it just the look of it itself 
holds up much better than the previous two Rambo films. With that said, let's move on to the bad. And the big problem here is that the main plot line, they very clearly just tried to copy what worked about Rambo First Blood 2, which makes the plot feel very familiar. Rambo is sent on a rescue mission. His first rescue attempt fails. He goes back in, pulls out multiple people. They escape in a helicopter. There's a final showdown involving an evil Russian inside of a helicopter that explodes. There's a bunch of these plot points that just kind of, okay, that's very similar for the next movie inside of a franchise. And likewise, you just feel like, okay, what are the chances of all the things that Rambo could do that he would go on such a similar adventure just a few years later? The other thing that makes the familiarity of the story a big problem is that it doesn't have the emotional core of the previous two films, where you had the Vietnam vet being wronged by society, and then you had the Vietnam vet getting to go back to Vietnam and win the war. Inherent inside of that is something that's emotionally powerful for both the character that we can resonate with, as well as certain people in the audience that can very much empathize and relate to the experiences and the desires of the Rambo character. It just doesn't quite translate here. It just turns into Rambo is a superhero that goes to different places to do his superhero trick. And, you know, that's a fun action movie, but it doesn't have the weight of the previous two films. I mentioned before that this movie has the slickest production of any of the Rambo films, and that's great when it comes to the way the movie looks. It's great when it comes to the size, scope of the explosions, the battle sequences, but in other aspects, it can make the movie feel a little bit generic as likewise the dialogue is the most big action movie blockbuster type dialogue to where almost all of Rambo's lines feel like they're trying to make a memorable quote. There's some sort of setup followed by a payoff. By the way you look, I can see you have no experience in war, do you? I fired a few shots. What do you think this man is? God! Oh God, we have mercy. Who are you? The worst nightmare. The movie is just jam packed with action movie one-liners. And while those can kind of add to some of the levity inside the film, it just makes the movie feel more like every other big action movie that came out right around that same time period. While the humor does help, this movie is also still way too serious for the amount of stupid. I've mentioned a bunch of this stuff before where he gets impaled, snaps it off, leaves the like stick inside of him for hours and then pushes it through, pours gunpowder into it just to like cauterize it and shows flames shooting out both sides of him inside of the film. And it does this like, look how tough Rambo is. He can even cauterize his own wounds with gunpowder, which, you know, any normal person sees that and they go, I don't, I'm pretty sure that would do way more damage than it would good. And you certainly wouldn't go and have a fight the next day. I mean, it's just filled with moments like that. And at the same time, you have it doesn't, it doesn't quite have the political speeches. It doesn't end with a monologue like the last or last two films, but it still has its moments inside of it with, where Troutman's yelling at a Russian about how the Russians have their Vietnam War now. And they're still trying to take it a little bit too seriously. And there's so many shots in this movie of just Rambo seriously staring at the camera, like just locked gaze and on the, like as he makes this serious face. And you go, okay guys, you're taking this really, really serious while telling a really stupid story or like a movie that's so over the top. I mean, there's a section in this movie that's about 10 minutes long of just Rambo shooting grenade arrows at helicopters, at people, like just blowing things up left and right with grenade arrows, which is amazing as like a ridiculous 80s action movie but you can't take yourself seriously when you're having him do something so pretty ridiculous. And finally, I don't know what's going on in the intro stick fight, but the sound, the audio is way off. There's just far too many stick clank noises whenever they're swinging. Like you can see them swing their stick like this and you hear four or five different all throughout the entire stick sequence. <laughs> to the degree that even though it's a pretty cool little fight, it's distracting for me to watch. I can't enjoy it because I'm like, why are there so many stick clank noises going on there? And I don't know if they were just like trying to like pick up every little noise that the sticks made when they touched anything, but it does not work the way they did it. And it's very odd for a movie with this big of a budget with such great production values that they would botch the sound engineering inside of the intro sequence to the film. Real quick, before I give you my final score on this one, be sure to tell me what you thought down below in the comment section. Also remember to check out Cody's review up there or the other reviews in my series right up here. If you've enjoyed this video, there's plenty more Rambo talk right up there. Over
overall, I put this one right on par with Rambo First Blood Part 2. Each of them have things that I really enjoy, and each of them have some pretty big faults with them, and I go back and forth as to which one I prefer over the other one. They both function very well as 1980s over-the-top action movies, and both of them have things about them that make them feel relics of the 1980s at the same time. It's a B overall. It's a 7.5 on the entertainment scale. If you're an action fan, this is, of course, a must-watch. It is an iconic movie franchise that all action movie fans must watch. Not an action movie fan, you can probably skip this one. Though I would bet you would enjoy this one more than Rambo First Blood Part 2 if you just had to watch one of them. Remember to check out those videos right over there if you want more Rambo talk. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.